life lesson for you. Alcohol can impair your judgment. Ooh, who knew that, right? Hey everyone, welcome back to the very unofficial travel guides. You know me, I'm Morgan. Today I'm gonna tell you the story in front of the red sofa about how I got robbed in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Sin City, so much fun to be had there. So many amazing, gigantic, beautiful themed resorts and hotels, lots of great restaurants, and of course, lots and lots of gambling and casinos. I mean, that's what you think of when you think of Vegas. At least that's what I think of. And, uh, you know, before Marcus and I got in, so into cruising, uh, Vegas was like, was like our thing. We would go like, when we traveled, we would do two big trips a year and we'd do Disney Vegas, Disney Vegas, Disney Vegas, Disney Vegas. And then we started cruising and now we do Disney Cruise, Disney Cruise, Disney Cruise. And I don't think we've been to Vegas for like four or five years now. I'm trying to think, when was the last time we were there? It's been a while. I could go through and look through the videos. <laughs> if any of you want to take the time to go through and look through my old videos to let me know when's the last time I posted a video out of Vegas, then write it in the comments below and save me the work, okay? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Marcus and I have been to Vegas several times, uh, probably six or seven times, actually, if not more. And uh, for those of you who've been around a while, I'm sure you've seen some of those videos, and if you haven't, then just search through my library if you go through to my the homepage for the very fun, uh, very unofficial travel guides on YouTube, you can click on the little um, you know, magnifying glass and then you can search through my library for Vegas videos. Most of them are just like hotel room tours and stuff like that. But we did do a tour, uh, like a helicopter tour over the strip and we have done, I've done some buffet uh, reviews. Uh, so anyways, um, I got robbed in Las Vegas and it's sort of, uh, it's weird how it happened, but um, I definitely count it as somebody stealing from me, uh, but in a way, it's 100% totally my fault. <laughs> All right, let's set up the uh, let's set up what happened here. It was our last full day in Vegas on this trip, and I don't. There's a lot of details that are sort of missing in my head, but I remember the important things. What I don't remember is why I was already kind of in a bad mood. I think I had lost, I think I had just lost a lot of the gambling money I had budgeted for that trip. Uh, the trip that, uh, the, the trip before this one, we had won a lot of money. Uh, I mean, what a lot is relevant. Uh, but from the, from the gambling money we had budgeted, we still had a lot of it in the last trip. Uh, and this trip, it just wasn't going well, and it was the last day, and I think, I think it was literally the last $50 I had. Uh, so, I, I don't mean like the last $50 to my name, I mean the last $50 of my fun money. And um, when we are in Vegas, we tend to sort of tour around and then we spend, you know, one day like going to Treasure Island and Mirage and Caesar's Palace. And then we spend one day going to like Flamingo, Bally's and Harrah's. You know what I mean? If you've been to Vegas, I'm sure you can totally uh, picture and I bet a lot of you do the same things as well. So um, this day, it was like I said, it was the last full day and we realized we hadn't really been on the, the one end of the strip and we wanted to start the day at the Tropicana. Tropicana is of course one of the oldest, um, you know, most famousest resorts there and at the time it had just gone through or it was even still going through a big renovation so they were redoing the public spaces, they were redoing the pool area, they were do redoing the rooms uh, and it looks really nice. Um, but we've never actually stayed there. So we went there and we went gambling and it was early. It was the first place we had gone to that day and it was probably like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning, which for Vegas is early. That's like, that's like you just woke up time usually in Vegas. And uh, we were walking around and we were looking for some machines. We mostly just play the slot machines. Um, sometimes I play uh, blackjack on the first two times I went to Vegas I played a lot of blackjack and I actually won I, I mean my I actually stayed above quite a bit uh, so but on this on this day we were just planning on playing slot machines and we have this little system that we that we play where we always try to find two machines next to each other that we both want to play and then we sort of go 
back and forth and it makes it more entertaining and it makes the money last longer. It's not just sitting there and pressing and pressing and pressing. Uh, maybe sometime I'll tell you about our system <laughs> uh, because we find it entertaining. So we found uh, two machines and uh, sat down and started playing and things were going well. They were, we were getting these you know, bonus rounds where you have to like interact with the machine. Uh, going off on another tangent here, but I will be getting to the juicy part of the story soon. Uh, for anybody who has not been in a modern casino, slot machines nowadays are m so much more than just like three wheels that mechanically turn and stop. They're like video games. So when you get to like a bonus round or if you get, you know, free spins or stuff like that, um, you, you interact with it and it's like a game and these funny things happen and these surprises happen and things you're not expecting and then you have to pick which color hair the mermaid cr uh, gets or you have to uh, pick, which, uh, pick which record the village people will play for the next dance party and that <laughs> defines how many free spins you get and things like that. I mean, it's, it's really, it can be very entertaining. So, uh, yeah, back to the story. We had sat down and I think we were both playing Star Trek machines. There was some machine that was themed to Star Trek. And uh, s relatively quickly after we sat down, uh, one of the cocktail waitresses came by and was like, beer, drink, cocktails, wine, cola, <laughs> as they always do. Another bit of information for anybody who may have never been to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, as long as you are playing on the casino floor, slot machines, blackjack, baccarat, uh, roulette, whatever. As long as you are playing on the casino floor, you can drink anything you want for free. They walk around, the waitresses walk around, they ask you what you want, you order it, and they bring it to you, and that's that. You don't have to pay for it. Which is, of course, um, you know, for people who are, who are interested in cruising and always get the drink package, you know, going to Las Vegas is like automatically having the drink package. All you have to do is be in the casino. So, uh, yeah, we weren't planning on, on having a cocktail that early, but because she came to us so quickly, we saw that as, I don't know, a sign. And we decided, uh, because it was early, we would order a pina colada. Um, pina colada, you know, has a lot of cream in it, and it seemed, you know, like a good breakfast drink because we both do not like Bloody Marys, which is a very popular breakfast drink. So, um, yeah, we ordered pina coladas, and she came back quickly, and it was, you know, in a relatively small plastic cup, um, but then it, they were done very well. So it was like the, the frozen drink, and then it had a little shot of rum on the top of it, and a cherry. So, I mean for a free drink still done very well. And we sat there and we drank our pina coladas, <laughs> probably on an empty stomach. And we're, you know, playing with Star Trek and things were going really well for Marcus on his machine. He had gotten a couple of bonus rounds and he was just winning and winning and winning these little jackpots of like $10 or $15. Um, and things were, for me, had gone sort of up and down and up and down and, at, and um, I had decided that I didn't want to play on this machine anymore. Uh, so I thought, all right, I'm going to, you know, play a couple more times. And if I get back down to $50, then I'm, I'm cutting this machine off and I'm stopping on this machine. And it happened. But Marcus uh, was really enjoying playing the machine he was on. And because, like I said, we have the system where we like to play together, or I guess I'd say I like to play with him together. Um, I decided uh, that I would just wait until he decided he didn't want to play on that machine anymore. So I just stopped playing. Got it? I mean, I didn't like get up. I didn't cash out. I didn't do anything like that. I just said, so I'm going to stop playing this machine and I'll watch you for a while. And then when we decide that it's time to move on to the next uh, machine, whatever that will be, then we'll go. Um, yeah, so we were sitting there and who came along again but uh, cocktail lady and uh, of course we thought, well, if she's here again, we might as well order another pina colada and here it's, you know, like probably noon and we probably haven't had any breakfast and we're on our second pina colada, but you know what? Hashtag what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas until you talk about it on the Sunday sofa time. Anyways, we, uh, what I'm trying to say was we had had a little bit of alcohol, and as always, 
life lesson for you. Alcohol can impair your judgment. Ooh, who knew that, right? I'm sitting there, I'm not playing. Marcus is playing, things are going well. And then eventually he just decides sometime, you know, through the second pina colada, um, yeah, this machine's getting boring. Let's, let's get up, let's go do something else. So we decide to do that. So we get up and we go walking through the casino and we're trying to find some other machine. And then we hear, they make some kind of announcement, I think, that uh, members of the Players Club between uh, 12 and 2 can get you know, something like, you know, 10 free spins just by coming up to the Players Club lounge uh, and, um, uh, you know, signing up or something like that. So we were like, oh, let's go do that. So we walk to the Players Club counter, we're waiting in line for the counter, and then we get up and it's our turn. And she said, all right, so I just need to see your Players Club cards. And uh, I realize I don't have mine. And then it like dawns on me, oh crap, I left it in the machine along with my $50. <laughs> so the mistake I made was when I stopped when I stopped playing but remained sitting there, what I should have done was taken out my Players Club card, cashed out of the machine. It doesn't spit out the, the machines in Las Vegas, modern day um, slot machines, they don't like, you know, spit out a bunch of coins like they used to, you get a ticket. It spits out like a ticket with a barcode and then you can take that to the cashier or to the machine, you know, like an, like an ATM, like a cash machine and that's where you get your cash. So I should have when I decided I wasn't gonna play anymore, but remained sitting there. I should have cashed out, taken my ticket, and taken my player's club card. That was the mistake I made. Because then I had been sitting there for so long, just watching Marcus and drinking pina coladas, and then when we decided it was time to get up, I wasn't even thinking about the stuff I had in the machine anymore, because for me, I guess at that point, it just seemed like I was just sitting there, you know? Yeah, so I booked back to the machine and and you know Las Vegas casinos the way they're set up it's not easy to find your way around it's very easy to get lost in there and just you know keep looking at fun things and uh, so it took me a couple minutes to find um, the machine again and when I found it there was a woman sitting there and she was, I don't know, she was much younger than I was. She was probably like early 20s. She also had looked like she had just woken up. <laughs> so she had kind of like a messy bun. And uh, even though it was inside, I think she was wearing sunglasses and she was wearing flip flops and, you know, like some, you know, like some cut off sweatpants shorts or something. And, uh, and I realized that my Players Club card had been um, taken out and it was like, like you know, just laying on the, the thing. And uh, I said, oh, excuse me, um, I think I left my stuff in the machine. Uh, can, is that my card? And she said, I don't know. And she grabbed it and she showed it to me. And I was like, yeah, that's mine. And I said, now listen, uh, I have $50 in this machine. Are you playing my $50? And she's like, no. And I said, you're sure, because I was just sitting here a couple minutes ago, I had $50 in the machine, my player's club card is still here, uh, but apparently my $50 is not, do you maybe know what happened to it? And she was getting kind of, uh, you know, kind of defensive and she's like, listen buddy, I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't take your money, I sat down here, the card was already laying there and I just wanted to play the machine. You know, leave me alone. And I was like, okay, I've got you. And uh, so I decided to call <laughs> hotel security or casino security. Here's where the story gets interesting. Uh, I don't remember, how did it happen? I think, you know, there's kind of people walking around, they've got walkie talkies there, you know, like security. So I went up to one of them and I said, um, listen, I left my player's club card and $50 in that machine over there and that girl that's sitting there now is the first person to sit there after me and she's claiming that she doesn't know where the money was and that it wasn't there when she sat down but I'm pretty sure that she took it and she's playing it right now. And um, that security person called them their boss and the boss showed up and he was like, I thought it was a joke. 
he seemed like somebody who had been hired because of the way he looked and the way he talked to play casino security mafia boss. He had like a thin mustache. Um, he had like, like slicked to the side black hair that was thinning in the front, kind of like mine. Um, and, uh, and he had a New Jersey accent. And he seemed like, like an actor, like a, like a streetmosphere character at uh, Disney Hollywood Studios or something like that. And, uh, and he came over and he was like, so what's the problem? And I said, well, I explained to him again, you know, I was playing there, I got up, I had been gone for maybe four or five minutes. And when I came back, she's sitting there, she claims she doesn't know where my money is, but my player's club card was still there, but she's saying the money was gone. And I said, I don't, I really don't think I was gone long enough that she, uh, that anybody else could have been there and taken it. I'm pretty sure that she has it. And he's like, are you really sure you want to do this? Because what's going to happen is she's going to basically kind of get arrested until we, uh, until we have time to look at the tapes, which is going to take a while. And you're going to be sitting here for that time too, uh, until we figure it out. Are you really sure you want to do this? And when I think back now, I, I really wish I hadn't done it because not only did it kind of ruin my day, I mean, my day was kind of ruined already because either way I had lost $50. And, uh, but by, by going through with it, then yeah, we ended up sitting there and waiting and I ended up ruining this poor girl's day as well. Uh, but you know, I try to think of it this way. At least she had an interesting story to tell. So what happened was, um, they went over to talk to her and she was, uh, and then she had to stop playing and she had to sit there also and wait with these security people while some, while they called somebody else and that person went to the back and watched the security tapes. And of course she's looking over at me and giving me dirty looks. And I, you know what, when I think back now, I feel so bad. And if there's, if there's any chance that this girl is watching this, um, video, please get in touch with me. I'm very sorry. Um, so we, yeah, we waited over here and she was sitting over there and she was being escorted by security. And I guess there was a security person by us too, to make sure that we didn't just disappear. And it took, yeah, a good half hour, 45 minutes. And actually this is something that Marcus reminded me of. And I had totally forgot about this story until we were on uh, the Norwegian Jade and Marcus brought it up again. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that that happened. I should do a Sunday sofa time about that. Um, so Marcus was not really involved in this thing. And he, Marcus was like, you know, is it all right if I go and, you know, play or something? Because uh, this is his thing. And I was like, yeah, it's fine with me. And the security person was like, yeah, yeah, you go ahead. And so Marcus sat back down someplace and started playing. And by the way, kept getting more free drinks. They were really, uh, they were really generous with the free drinks that day. And by the time I was done, Marcus was sauced. Anyways, we, um, or I waited and eventually uh, this mafia boss <laughs> from uh, New Jersey came back over and he's like, so buddy, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, we watched the tapes and she did not take that money. And when I think back now, my, uh, my reaction should have been, all right, so you saw who took it, who took it, and where is it? Because, you know, this is your casino. Somebody took $50 that didn't belong to them. Where is this person? Where's my money? Making them responsible for my mistake, like a lot of people do on vacation. Uh, I've experienced that over and over and over. Um, but uh, I was so embarrassed at the time, and I felt so bad for her that... Um, that I was just like, okay, you know, I'm sorry for your trouble. I was pretty sure that she took it. Um, it just seemed like, you know, I had been gone for, for such a short amount of time that there was no other possibility that anybody else could have taken it because I feel like we just walked away, you know, had been gone for like two or three minutes, turned around, went back, and she was there. And that's why it just seemed logical to me uh, that, that she knew what uh, was going on. And the, the boss guy said something like, yeah, on the tapes, you were gone for 14 minutes. You had gotten up from 14 minutes between the time that you had gone back to talk to her. And in that 14 minutes, somebody else was there and took your money. 
And like I said, I should have said, yeah, who? Where is that person? If you saw them on the tape, let's go find them. I want my $50. But like I said, I was, um, I was too embarrassed and I was just frustrated at the time and I just wanted to get out of there and forget the whole thing. And, um, and I, said, uh, I said to the guy, can I please go over there and apologize to her? I feel really bad for what happened. And he was like, no, you don't want to talk to her now. You already ruined her day. Just get out of her life. You know what? Have a good day. Uh, go do something else. Just forget about her. This kind of stuff happens in Vegas. Um, you have a nice day. And so, yeah, that's how it ended. I didn't get my $50 back. I was in a very bad mood. Uh, I probably ruined her day. She probably went back up to talk to her friends or family and was like, oh my gosh, some asshole just accused me of stealing his money. And I had to sit there and be surrounded by security guards and let's get out of this place. So yeah, I mean, I probably created much more trouble than it should have been just because I was irresponsible and left $50 sitting in a slot machine. Lesson learned. <laughs> Yeah, that is the story. And now comes the time of Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live here on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, I could not comment on your comments because I was on board the Norwegian Jade uh, cruise ship and I just didn't, uh, it was all set up differently than a traditional relaxing Sunday sofa time here, so I skipped it last Sunday. But the video uh, that I made was just analyzing this micro cruise that we had been on. It was like literally like 48 hours on a cruise ship, um, talking about if I would do it again, if it was worth it. And so that's what these comments are referring to. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, Jessica or Jessica Gomez writes, good to hear your experience, Morgan. I'm going to think twice before booking a short cruise. I was looking for a four night uh, Bahamas cruise, but you know I live 10 hours at least away from the port if I fly. So now I have doubts if it's uh, going to be worth it. I already wrote back to Jessica, um, but um, now, you know, what I, what I wrote was, um, I think if, if you're flying 10 hours to get to the cruise port and then you're only gonna do a four night cruise, that's gonna be really intense. And, uh, you know, I would say before you don't cruise, you know, why not? But if I, you know, if the, the best possibility would be to make the cruise part of a longer trip. So fly to, let's say, fly to Miami, stay on the beach in Miami for three nights, and then, uh, and then get on the cruise and then do four nights on the cruise ship and then fly back home. Or do it the other way around, fly down, uh, get on the ship, uh, do the four nights cruise, and at the end, spend four nights in Miami. You know what, that's probably the better way to do it. That's probably the better way to do it. And then you know you're gone for like a week or eight nights, and in that period, you, you do the four night cruise. But if you're just flying 10 hours, short cruise and then 10 hours back. It's gonna be kind of intense. Uh, Jessica or Jessica, please let us know what you decide to do. Um, Rachel Hunt uh, says, if you do something like this one again, I would recommend flying to Southampton. If you had to transfer in Brussels for Heathrow anyway, it would be easier to do the same to Southampton. Then you don't, don't have to worry, don't have the transfer time to worry about. Yeah, she's talking about um, we, um, we missed our transfer bus from the airport to the ship because um, flying through um, London Heathrow, we, had, we got stuck for so long in the customs and immigration that we just missed the bus. Um, and she suggests that we fly directly to Southampton. So there's a small airport in Southampton. Uh, but we, um, those flights, they just cost so much more. They cost so much more. And so we decided... To skip it uh, but yeah if um, if we had had it in our budget or if we um, I guess had booked flights earlier and had found some reasonably price priced flights to Southampton that would have made it so much easier um, Kaylee Rundell writes lucky people who live in places like Fort Lauderdale I bet they go for weekend cruises to the Caribbean and back <laughs> yeah you know what if I live there I totally would um, because that's the thing this weekend cruise, uh, there's a lot of cruise ships that start or visit here, Hamburg, but most of them are cruise lines that I'm not necessarily really interested in, and I know that you guys aren't necessarily really interested in, so that's why I kind of skip them, and that's why we flew all the way to London just to get on a Norwegian cruise ship to do this weekend cruise. But if I lived in a port 
you know, like Miami or Fort Lauderdale, uh, and there were weekend cruises, I would be doing them all the time. That is for sure. All right, last comment here. Tom B writes, OMG, we can relate. On our honeymoon, we did a European cruise with a couple with a couple days in Ireland before and after the cruise. We connected coming home in Heathrow and it was a nightmare. I want to go to London for a week and my wife is like, oh no, not Heathrow. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess Heathrow has a bad reputation. Uh, first of all, you know, it's, an, it's a gigantic airport. You know, it's like flying in a JFK or something like that. And when we came around the corner to that customs and immigration hall, I was, I could not believe how many people were there. And you know what? A lot of people had been writing, yeah, I bet there were only two people uh, checking passports. And you know what? It definitely was not like that. There were tons of counters open, but it was just, there were just so many people. I couldn't believe how long uh, it took and how many people were there. That is what, um, that is what the problem was. It wasn't that they didn't have enough people working there, surprisingly. It was just that the sheer number of people could not get through there quick enough. It took us over an hour and that was just an hour that we were not planning on. All right, that is uh, Sunday Sofa Time for this week. Thanks as always everybody for hanging out here. I'm glad I can sit down and talk with you and uh, coming up next week is going to be then uh, during the week another video from the Norwegian Escape, which is not the last cruise, but it's the second to last cruise we were on. And when I'm finished with the Norwegian Escape videos, then in addition to all the Sunday Sofa Time videos, um, then I will start posting the videos from the Norwegian Jade. So you have all that to look forward to. Um, if you haven't done it already, which I'm sure you have if you've watched this video till the end, but if you haven't, um, subscribe to my channel here on Facebook or on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The addresses for all those are down here and you can do a little bit extra over at patreon.com slash very unofficial. See you next week. Bye-bye.